Warriors are out of the playoffs twice. It's been playing games. You know, there's very few true difference makers, outcome changers. They lead dynasties. Steph Curry, Tom Brady. Do you remember that moment, Tom Brady, last year in New England? He was on the bench imploring, yelling at wide receivers. Can somebody please just get open? It poured out. Brady's frustration with Bill Belichick's inability to draft and develop skill people. It was no coincidence that Tom Brady left for Tampa, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, an offensive coach. That was Steph last night, the last champion standing. Clay Thompson 0 for 10. Andrew Wiggins hasn't been the same player last couple of years. Chris Paul didn't show up. Trace Jackson Davis had to be pulled from the floor. Last guy, along with Draymond, with championship pedigree, feels like he could be part of something special. That's it. Again, Draymond Green, I'd keep. But Steph Curry needs somebody next to him that can score 27 to 28 points a night. Minimum. He's not going to get Luka. We know that. There are a handful of players that aren't going to. Jason Tatum's not going to be a warrior. We know that. I don't know where you go. Steph was efficient last night, 43% on threes. But Steph Curry last night scored 22 points. The rest of the starting lineup for the Warriors scored 26 points. It is time for the big pivot. I'd keep Steph. I'd keep Pods, the young kid. I'd keep Draymond. And I'd move everybody else. They do not have a ton of assets. Here's what I believe you have to cross your fingers and root for a couple of things, and they're very possible. The Clippers unravel, bit of a mess against the Mavs, get beaten like five games. Paul George has a player option. Paul George played at Fresno State, Californian, loves California. Bro, our flight, come up north. And then, depending on how the Lakers season goes, LeBron gets frustrated with D'Lo. I would make a call to LeBron. LeBron, and it's no secret, is close with Draymond. And the one player he said he would always consider playing with, without a doubt, you could ask people close to LeBron. You may be able to ask LeBron, is Steph Curry. I'd call. Okay, so this doesn't really fully make sense. I understand what... Um... Colin is, you know, trying to get at, but there, there's a few things that I want to unpack here now. Um, okay, first, the, what the Warriors need to do if you want to extend Steph Curry's career and chances of winning, they need to do what LeBron was able to do in terms of getting AD. Steph Curry has not had an equivalent running mate like an AD that LeBron has had <clears throat> since um, Clay Thompson um or even i guess like up for a season and a half or so of wiggins like he hasn't really had that guy who you can depend on even though to a degree ad you can't depend on just because some of his health issues but obviously when he's playing he is that dude um if ad you like put it this way when you watch both those games yesterday the warriors versus the kings and the pelicans versus the lakers there was no equivalent of and Anthony Davis that um, that the Warriors had there there was there was no equivalent. It was just um, Steph Curry all alone on an island, and that's really difficult, especially when you are Steph Curry's you know size. You just can't take over a game like that because you're just a smaller person. It's more difficult to truly be dominant, especially in the playoffs when you're physicality is what you can rely on. LeBron James's shot was not nothing special. He was short on all of his threes. He was, you know, he his he didn't have his legs underneath him, but he could still drive to the basket because he's still physically bigger and stronger than majority of the people out there. That's what you can rely on in these close games or come time, you know, playoffs. Um, but although that wears you down as well, especially when you're specifically the age of LeBron. Um, but this idea that the Warriors should target LeBron, I mean, we talk about, you know, I just made the video yesterday about who's under the most amount of pressure, LeBron, or I think it was uh, Zion was the question. And if LeBron is under all this pressure, all this pressure, you know, he's chasing the goat, the ghost, whatever. How is teaming up with Steph Curry? How does that affect his legacy? I mean, I, th I, I, 
even if they won, let's say they teamed up together and they became a dominant force, which I don't know how dominant they would be because they're older, but they would still be an, a great team. The question is, is like if LeBron wins another championship or wins two championships, let's say he wins two more with Steph Curry and now they both have six. What does a general fan base think about that? You know, what about the people that are actually debating whether or not LeBron James is the GOAT versus Michael Jordan? And now that he won two more with the greatest shooter of all time, I just, I don't, I don't know. Someone who's already a four-time champion. So it all depends on what LeBron wants and expects out of his legacy. Um, because if he just really, truly cares about playing great, pure high quality basketball and wants to have fun and wants to be surrounded by great players, which I can't blame him, then yeah, teaming up with Steph Curry would be great. But if he's thinking about what's my resume to being able to be like, I am the GOAT, then I, you know, I don't know if that's the way, but it depends because here's my, here's the reality that I think, I think, let's say LeBron becomes officially the goat and and whether just because that's what the general consensus becomes after he retires or because he rips off a couple more championships and it's just you know that's what people say i don't think he will be the goat for very long because i think we are going to constantly see these other great players no one saw lebron coming when jordan was gone but yet lebron showed up and now we think no one's ever, these are records that no one will ever be we always say that in the media and it's always like and, and other fans and i always find it so dumb like you really think that these records are going to stand forever because now boom we got web Binyama. and it's like if, as long as web Binyama doesn't get hurt that dude can play for like 20 plus years as well and he will break virtually every single record under the sun and then when web Binyama is gone someone else is going to come i mean like you just have no idea the question mark is always injuries and longevity and that is clearly the best thing that the tom brady's and the lebron's have going for them but we have to imagine over the years that we are going to see players. Medical advancements are only going to get better. Surgeries are only going to get better. Injury prevention is only going to get better. Diet, nutrition, all that stuff is only going to get better. So the reason why I'm bringing this up now is, is that I don't know how important that legacy chasing really even matters. And it may be actually just chase those rings no matter who you win with because Yes, to a degree, we all understand that Michael Jordan won with Scottie Pippen and some of these other Hall of Famers, but 20 years, 30 years passed, and like no one's really zeroing in on that fact. And so 20, 30 years from now, when you're watching, you know, TNT or whatever, and they're talking about the greats of the, of the past, and they say, you know, Michael Jordan, and then they say LeBron James, and they're comparing the rings, and you see that LeBron now has six or seven rings or something, um, they'll say, isn't it amazing that he won, w you know, when he was in his forties, something no player has done yet. Um, and, or look, he's got six, seven rings and look where he is up among the other greats. Like they're not going to really dig into the details and say, well, he did team up with Steph and he did team up with Dre and he did team up with a team that already had four wins, like four championships. Like, I don't know if that conversation is what's really, you know, is what what it gets talked about, you know, in the future. And again, when we always talk about these legacies, it's like the legacy to who to these types of sports shows when they like talk about who's the goat, who's the best. I, I you know, like or when you again in during the broadcast when they give you like a random graphic in the middle of the game, it's just like those conversations only happen so frequently. They only happen as frequently as we make them. I mean, realistically, how often do we actually genuinely talk about Michael Jordan in these conversations? Uh, it's just not that regularly. And the same thing will be for LeBron. 20 years from now, we're just not going to be talking about LeBron again and again and again. You know, Colin pointed this out, and he's right. And Jordan's a little bit of an exception to this, I suppose. But um, we don't really live in the past for football and basketball. You know, baseball lives in the past. They're still talking about Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth. And, you know, everyone still looks at that same you know, home run record, which has been slightly, obviously, compromised because of uh, steroid use. But in basketball, does anyone, did anyone know who was the, you know, what was the number of the most three shot? No. Does anyone even know right now? No. Does anyone know, you know, like you, people, we don't really look at those record books. And again, how often are you just casually talking about Larry Bird? You don't. How often are you talking about Ray Allen? Ray Allen was the best shooter until Steph Curry came along. How often does anyone talk about Ray Allen? 
like never i'm never hanging out with my friends we're like yo you know who was good ray allen it never happens colin's never bringing up ray allen he's not talking about reggie miller he's not talking i mean like occasionally when it when there's not a lot going on and we just and they just need content and they're like well who's on the rush mount rushmore is it magic johnson is it michael jordan is it lebron james like they just need something to talk about so it gets into a forced conversation but you are never just casually watching sports, watching basketball, talking with your friends, hanging out, whatever. And you're bringing up, you know, Magic Johnson into the conversation. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I don't believe it. And if you are, then you're just a, a huge basketball nerd, which respect to you by all means. Um, I don't mean that in like in a negative way. Um, so I just think that, you know, that could then be like where LeBron maybe recognizes that. And it's ballsy because he, I think he would catch some heat for it, but... I just, you know, I don't know. Um, and then in terms of Paul George, I think you're still going in the wrong direction with Paul George, though, because Paul George is also older, maybe slightly less reliable. And I just don't know, you know, I, I guess maybe if you team up Steph, Paul George, and Draymond, and then the rest of the guys are younger and, and filling in the gaps. But look at what the Lakers. The Lakers have filled in the gaps more with younger players. Um and that's been able to kind of help carry them through. You know, that's been kind of able to patch up the holes in the ship that is the Lakers. Because I don't think the Lakers are this great team either. But um, they're definitely more resilient um, and to a large degree more mature and more experienced than, say, the Golden State Warriors. Um, but, yeah, I think the Warriors are definitely in a tough situation. And I'm not in the business of trying to make predictions or anything like that. I really have no idea what they're going to do. I do think it's pretty shocking at this point over the years. I know they've won and it served them well that they have never really gone out and gotten a true big, you know, someone who can truly stand up to a Sabonis, who can stand up to an Anthony Davis, you know, like they, they still don't have that size and strength. And I've, I found that surprising over the years. Um, that's always been their limiting factor. Um, and I'm just surprised that they, you know, after the whole small ball thing kind of came back down to baseline a little bit, why they never really, you know, sought to, to, to reconcile that aspect of their game. <laughs> but that is just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. Do you think the Golden State Dynasty is over? And do you think the Warriors should target LeBron or Paul George? Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, Either way, let's get in some discussions, let's get in some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help with the visibility and all the haters and the trolls combating them. Thank you so much, and see you next time.